Basha, welcome to the program. Thank you. Good to be here. You've written a book about the last 13 days of your mother's life. Why did you decide to write that story? I started to write the story. Originally, it began as, I guess, a, th a therapeutic thing. While I was by her bedside, I began to write notes, uh, diary notes, and talking to my older brother, and I said uh, about what we were going through in the intensive care ward of the hospital with an elderly person, an elderly relative, and watching what other people around that area were going through. And of course, it was for me, it was a whole new experience. And I thought, no one really talks about it. Everyone's sort of quiet about it. And, you know, you see she died peacefully. And, and you know, that's not really the case most of the time. And um, so that's what I wanted to do at first, write a feature article about it. And then I was doing a Master of Letters at Sydney University and the mentor, I was meant to write a book or the beginning of a book. And I sort of came up with everything else. Oh, look, what about this, Sue? What about that? And she said, no, 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 that's all in the past. Why don't you write something that's just happened to you? And so I said, oh, well, I had these notes that I was writing while my mother was dying. And she said, well, write, start to write it up for me. And so I did. I did 2,000 words for her. And she said, well, you know, this is something, this is different. This is interesting. And she said, keep going. And she dragged it out of me. And coming from a journalistic background, I'm sort of used to, I want to go beginning, middle, end, cut to the chase quickly and not let myself go, really. And also, the thing of, I thought, is this too, just too self-indulgent, you know, and, and I needed a safety net, someone to say, no, it's okay, you can go further with it. And of course, during the process, it became a very cathartic thing as well. You know, some days I would be sitting there and I basically couldn't go on because, you know, I would suddenly confront something about her life and, and how I was feeling. Pasha, what was your first reaction when you realised your mother was very sick? Well, I knew that for the past n uh, nine months or so, she'd been going downhill. Then we fi it finally twigged that, in fact, there was something drastically wrong. And as her mind was going, as with, happens with so many people, their bodies start to also follow. And um, so she was in a situation where she was going in and out of hospital because she always felt secure in a hospital. She wanted to go or to the doctor and confronting that thing of what she's going to do, whether, you know, and we've got carers in and everything like that. And then suddenly um, it got to a stage just after her birthday where she went back to hospital and within four or five days she developed pneumonia. And it was a shock because I thought, oh, yes, it's another one of the hospital stays. And suddenly it became something else. And um, so I was. I was quite taken aback when that happened. And it was confronting immediately. And then to fly down to see her and then really go live in a cocoon for 13 days. How difficult was it living in that cocoon those last 13 days? But there's nothing outside of that. You're totally in that world. You know, you're totally in that world with her, with, you know, with my siblings. And um, nothing exists outside of that world. She, she had enormous strength of character, your mother, didn't she? Very. She's a, a, a Polish immigrant, as, mm. as, as was your father. Mm. What gave her that strength? How did, how did she, where did she draw that strength from? Um, I, I'm not quite sure, but I, I think it's just from her background and really getting through the war and surviving the war. And she was a doer, you know. She always wanted to do things and, and you know, buy properties, make a better life you know, forge forward with that. You know, but she also had a, a negativity, which a lot of the, that generation, and especially Eastern Europeans, do, which often held her back. Um, but I think that her drive and her, her determination came from survival, really, and needing to survive, and probably seeing all the things that she saw and experienced during the war. And I, I was interesting, because my sister-in-law, my older brother's my, um, wife, said that when she first met my mother, she said, I've never met someone who's so in still in the war you know because obviously you know if it had a huge impact well if you're you know between the ages of 19 and 25 during a time like that it's fairly formative what have you learned personally from the death of your mother um what have i learned personally i've i've probably with the book also i've learned to understand her more as a person to appreciate her as a person because um, to understand her apart from us more. I've also learnt from the book that I don't want to go through that. I don't want to, you know, just sort of let me out, let me go. I don't want to have all that done to me. Um, and that's probably what I've learnt a lot. 
these are ethical issues, aren't they, to let a person die with dignity or, or to medically intervene. Mm. How important is faith in a situation like this? Well, it's quite interesting because I was brought up a Catholic and um, during the time she was dying, um, there was a priest at the hospital who, and I brought him in. Uh, and then I think that she needed the Polish priest there, so I got the Polish priest. And then also there is, you know, as you know in the book, a part where I was totally confused about what to do and I phoned up a priest that I knew and asked him what to do. And he said, you know, there is a time when you have to let the broken body go. And that was very profound for me and gave me great strength. And it was interesting that, you know, of the three of us, I'm probably, you know, the most, you know, fall back on, on that faith more than the other two, or they don't really, but probably I do. Um, and it was important to her as well, and the Polish priest as well. He came to see her after she'd been withdrawn from, from life support, so she was sort of gaining a bit of consciousness. And uh, he said to, to us after she died, look, she knew what was happening to her. She knew why I was there and she knew I could see in her eyes that absolutely what was happening. So that was very interesting too and that was a wonderful thing to hear as well, I guess reassuring. Vasha, thank you very much for sharing your time with us. Thank you.